What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Bob's Garage and today we're going to go ahead and replace this coolant hose which we noticed was leaking in our 2.7T engine inspection video. This is the uh, this is on the back side of the driver's I'm sorry this is the driver's side of the engine the back side of the head and it literally connects to the upper radiator hose there's a T and then it's just a short piece uh, maybe about 14 inches long or so and uh, the front side where it hooks into the T is held on with an Oedeker clamp and this side is just held on with a normal pinch hose clamp and let's go ahead and take care of that all right guys so um, I just wanted to I, I'm actually using my cell phone because it has a better close-up camera than my better camera or my other camera so um, what I wanted to show you guys is, I mentioned it before, but you can see all of this crud and stuff dripping here. So if you look up here and see, see how there's a hose clamp? You may be able to tell, but the, um, the hose itself, just above the hose clamp is bubbling, bulging. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this coolant hose um, <clears throat> it runs from the back of the driver's side over and taps in here and it's held on at this connection point with an Oedeker clamp and over here it's just held on with like a normal clamp like hose clamp so you just pinch that with some pliers so we're gonna uh, go ahead and remove that right now and replace it with um, we're gonna we're gonna uh, hit up the dealer and look and see how much the stock OEM hose piece that matches this would be. But you can see this. Um, I don't know if this is considered heat shielding or what. It's kind of like braided or corded on the end here. Uh, you can see it's all frail and brittle and breaking apart. So I think at this point we should just go ahead and replace this hose. Um, because it's definitely gonna get worse and it potentially explode or or slice or cut It's already leaking out here. So what we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and remove it right now All right, so um, our hose is bulging just above this hose clamp So it might be a little more complicated trying to get this hose clamp off And let's see here. We're just pinching it with some pliers and it's the hose is so ballooned out that it it would appear that it's it's just not going to work. We're not going to be able to get this hose clamp up. So what we're going to have to do is potentially either cut this hose clamp off completely or slide it down and then take it off once we get the hose off. Let's see here. Okay, what we're gonna try to do is loosen the hose clamp and then pry this the hose off. Okay, so here we are with a close-up. I had to snap off the hose clamp that was on here. I basically bent the shit out of it to break it off because I couldn't move it up because this is so ballooned out and the hose is so brittle and smushed I couldn't even move it down, the hose clamp that is. So I cut it off and this gives you a little bit of a better view showing just how out of shape or ballooned that hose really is so if it wasn't really leaking much now it was going to become a problem later and i will say it wouldn't you know if you have the engine out check and inspect these things because this is wasn't easy to get that hose clamp off and i couldn't imagine doing this in the car um if that wasn't ballooned and mushroomed out like that it shouldn't be an issue to do it in the car but uh man so now i still gotta pry this guy off it's not even budging and i've already um, started digging at this so here we go 
Okay, here's another shot. I was able to um, remove that. And what I like to do for hoses like this that are stuck is use a pick. And especially like a, a pick with a hook. And then I basically kind of shove it in here and then kind of go up and then work it around the edges of this hard line. Um, just putting a screwdriver in there and prying up isn't going to really do much. So by kind of putting this in there and you're, you're basically breaking that bond. Okay, so here's the hose and this was the view that we could see. Check this out. This is on the back side of it and I can't tell at least under visual inspection, but I think that I might have had like a pinhole leak here. And that's not good. I mean, right in the back of the engine, right right by the turbos. So, I, like I said, you can't really see it from this side, which is interesting until you turn it over. So now all that's left is we're gonna cut this Odeker clamp. Um, here's the line here, a little bit of a wide angle. We're going to cut this clamp here, and then we'll come back after we get this replacement hose and uh, crimp on another one and then resecure it. So we need to get the hose as well as another hose clamp for this end and uh, let's make it happen. All right, guys, I realize my head's probably cut off in this video, but that's all right. Um, we are back after a TV timeout, and we got our part so we can now install the hose that goes from this T back to the fitting on the back of the driver side head. Um, Audi calls this hose, this particular hose, a vent hose. And it's part number 8DO121107P as in Paul. And in addition to this hose, it was about 80 bucks at the dealer. I picked up two spring clamps and one basically for each side. Um, it's, I'm finding it's kind of interesting that stock Audi used Oedeker clamps on all three sides of this uh, T, but um, on their parts reference or their replacement, they're just using spring clamps. So, interesting, I don't know. And so what we got to do is get this party started, open this up. And the side with the big bend, almost like a 90 degree bend, we're going to put that on the back of the engine, I believe. And then this side will go on, on here. And what we'll do first is we'll get our spring clamps already on the ends of the hose. And then once we go to set it up or set it in place, we can get in there. All right, I did misspeak. I said that the 90 needed to go on the back of the head. It, that's not true. It needs to go right here on this T, and this end goes on the back. So here's our clamps. I know it's all black on black. It's going to be hard to see it or view it, but we're going to open up these spring clamps and pinch them and, and just basically slide them up here so we can get the hose reinstalled. Okay, so we're going to take some pliers, stretch them out, put it over the hose, and release. From there, we're going to press this replacement hose, they call it a vent hose, onto the T. And I mentioned it before, but this one does have that heat shielding or that shroud on the hose. The replacement one has the same matching stuff that the other one had. Okay, so because the hose clamp is right here, I can't push it onto the T the full amount. So I'm going to take the tension off the hose clamp, see if I can push at the same time. Let's see here.
<clears throat> there it is. Okay. So we pushed it all the way up to the top, and they give you white indexes for where to put the hose clamp. So we're going to open it up and just slide it right in between those white markings. There you go. And I mentioned that it was interesting that the replacement part was a spring clip while these are Oedekers, but look at this. This Oedeker isn't really technically that tight that I can move it around. As another side note, originally the wastegate lines on each turbo were held on with Oedeker clamps, and when I ordered replacements, they have, it's like a screw-driven, well, worm-type hose clamp instead of the Oedeker for the replacement. So maybe they had some issues with those in the past, I don't know. Now let's go ahead and move on to the back connection. All right, guys, so this one's going to be very hard to film because of the nature of the beast of getting into this tight back corner here. I did show you guys close-ups before, but uh, we're basically just going to be sliding this onto the fitting back here and then um, dropping the hose clamp or the spring clamp into place. So apologize for not having a close-up, but... Uh, if you're replacing this hose, you already know what it looks like in this general vicinity here. trick is to kind of get enough leverage so you can push it down in there all the way. I'll show you guys a close up when I'm, once this is in place here. pretty good there all right let's come in for a close-up guys all right there it is in all of its glory guys so this is a vent breather hose I guess you can see how it has the heat shielding built onto the cable itself and right down in here you can see we got it on fitting is in place here and the hose clamp, what we're going to do is clean all of this residue well, as much as we can. I like to clean all this off so that way if we develop another leak or anything like that, we can um, diagnose it. So, <clears throat> that's it. Alright guys, let me know if you have any comments or questions on this job. Um, it was pretty straightforward. I just kind of had to, you know, visually find that this uh, old cable was bad or old old hose was bad um, it was bulging and looked like it could burst at any moment I think it possibly had a small pinhole but I couldn't um, verify that for sure but uh, that's it it's just a couple spring clamps and a hose so stay tuned for more and don't forget to comment or leave any questions see you out there <laughs>